Hi guys, uh, today we'll be talking about the hammer throw. Uh, one word we can use to best describe the hammer throw is powerful. The amount of force and energy it takes to launch the hammer for maximum distance is one few have mastered and many have tried. We can use that uh, equation force applied, more force applied equals more distance achieved. And we can use this simple diagram that I drew to uh, describe how the ha hammer is thrown. The hammer is a ball connected to a rope that is swung by a person. It's uh, This event is usually seen in the Olympics or World Championships. So, let's get into some history of the hammer throw. Uh, the hammer throw was first introduced in the United Kingdom, to be more exact, in Ireland, um, during the time period of 1800 BC, so before Christ. But, however, to every um, theory, there are some contrasts. Uh, some believe the event was formed to pay honor to the Norse god Thor. So, those are the two theories. However, the English standardized the event in 1875, and now it's the event we tune into during the Olympics. So, the hammer throw is a sport that is based on the idea of centripetal acceleration or centripetal force. Let's define centripetal acceleration. So, centripetal acceleration is defined as the property of the motion of a body tra tra traversing a cir circular path. The acceleration is directed radially toward the center of the circle and it has a magnitude equal to the square of the body speed along the curve divided by the distance from the center of the circle to the moving body. This definition comes from uh, my favorite uh, dictionary, Oxford Dictionary. So as a better understanding of centripetal acceleration is given, we can understand the basics of the hammer throw and what defines the motion it goes through to accelerate at the levels it does and thus giving the insane distance it travels when the hammer is throw, thrown. These insane distances are only shown in Olympics. I bet if we, me or you or an average Joe went outside and tried to do the hammer throw, we would not even get close to these distances. So, as the hammer is released, the motion turns into uniform circular motion. As the ball moves in a circular motion, the wire produces tension force. So the motion goes through the centripetal uh, uniform circular motion. You can see it as it's released. Plus, it goes because of the rope, as the ball is tied to a rope that's tied to a loop, it has a tension force into it. So this tension is, that is in the shoes causes the, um, causes the ball to stay in the circular path. So as more tension is introduced, this causes the speed of the ball or the velocity of the ball to increase as well. As you release the ball down the field, it will go farther if more tension force is introduced. So as you, the heart, the more tension force is introduced or tension is felt during the in the rope, the more the velocity is going to increase, which increases the uh, distance the ball, uh, the hammer travels as it is launched. So, um, the hammer throw can be measured with the centripetal force or centripetal equation of FC equals MV squared R, that's centripetal force, or AC equals V squared over R, that's centripetal acceleration. So, let's do a sample equation, shall we? Um, so, that's a, it's a pre-drawn statement. So, that's my ball. Uh, it has a mass of 10 grams. Um, the length of the rope, as I demonstrated, equals radius. Um, the length of the rope I chose is 50 centimeters. That's the standard um, uh, rope size, or it equals 0 0.5 meters. Okay. Um, the mass is 10 grams. That's what I chose. But I read um, conflicting reports that there are, every competition chooses a different map, uh, mass to um, find true results, right? So velocity I put as 15 meters per second. Uh, this is my diagram. As you can see, I put force tension and force centripetal going towards the center of the cir uh, circle that's created. And my uh, ball is right here. So let's see. So I'm using the force centripetal equation. So force centripetal equation. 
and we can uh, plug in the MV squared over R, so 10 grams times 15 squared over 0 0.5 meters, which equals to 2,250 over 0 0.5, and I got 4,500 newtons. So that's, um, for this example, that's how many newton centripetal force newtons would uh, be produced. So, as more tension force is introduced, the velocity of the hammer will increase, causing more distance to be covered by the throw once it has reached peak velocity. So, the hammer, the professional hammer throwers, they only release um, the hammer as they re reach peak velocity, and there is an average of three um, rotations for most hammer throwers to reach that velocity and launch the ball. So it's around three rotations. So we can use the frequency equation as well to find tension force, but this is much more simpler equation and a more um, standardized equation that um, physics students use to find the ten um, to find the force used in the hammer throws. So. So by the centripetal acceleration can be calculated by plugging in the mass of the ball at the end of the hammer, the speed in which is how fast the ball is rotating in centripetal motion, which we've done, and the radius of the circle created as the ball is acting in a circular motion, which is uh, shown in our diagram. As we calculate this, this um, as we calculate this, we will have a better understanding of how it accelerates, causing us to find the distance it will travel as released from the thrower's hand. So the more force um, acting upon it equals more distance traveled. So thus the hammer throw is explained as it is basic centripetal acceleration or force. And then it comes to the basic idea that more force applied great, creates more speed or tension, which creates more speed or velocity. And this is how the throw will turn out better than the rest. So you have to create more force, um, centripetal or tension, which increases the speed, which increases the distance it travels. So that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and yeah, uh, it's Kabir signing out.